So in order to stage for going to the Congaree National Park, we spent the night in the Sesquicentennial Park here in Columbia, South Carolina. And it's a beautiful little park. They're building and remodeling in the camping area. So only half the loops are, are available right now. But it's been very quiet and it's been a very peaceful thing. And it's been a good thing for Maggie because she's enjoyed being out here. And look, they have boating and they have paddle boards and kayaks and canoes and uh, lots of things to do here. And if you're gonna stage to do the same thing, it's a pretty good option. You're about 25 to 30 minutes away from the National Park. This has been an awesome trail. If you keep going that way, I think it goes all the way around the lake. But if you turn right when you come across the bridge, you go by some waterfalls, and eventually we're hoping it's gonna take us back to the campground. But just looking around, it's a really neat trail system they have here. It's uh, It was a really good decision to stay here last time. So that boardwalk trail exits out here at the sign by the lake up here. But if you turn left, you'll see a little path. And then that path leads in the woods behind the campground. A tendency to get off the beaten path even when we're out hiking like this and that's what we did today but i pulled up google maps and looked at the satellite image and you can kind of see through the trees and see where the trails are and we guessed that we were heading back over to our campsite the good thing about it is it marked where we parked so hey we were just heading towards that but i'll tell you what the the trails in this area awesome this is uh this is just a little bit away from the bigger city of Columbia, South Carolina, which is the capital of South Carolina. And you've got all this just like right here. It's just, it's just the perfect thing to do for an afternoon. And through the woods there, I can spot a little tan van. See, see if you can see it. Can you spot it? And this is the kind of campground that you get when you stay here at the sesquicentennial you get electricity 30 amp pretty level sites out in the middle of the woods like this a lot of tent sites around us so what started this trip for us this particular time was going to visit my aunt who lives in conway and taking my mom with us so that she could visit her as well. What we found out was, well, she likes to cook, doesn't she? She's a great cook. <laughs> and, and she gave us a, a lot of things to bring back. And green thumb, man. Oh yeah, she's wonderful. 
plants and she looks like she has a greenhouse at her house yeah so she gave lynn lots of little things to bring back and plant at the new house and she gave me something that's making me smile this morning because we need a little snack some homemade lemon pound cake and <laughs> happy dance worthy Whoa! Ooh, about happy dropped it. <laughs> Becky would have been happy. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I learned from sitting there with my aunt and my mom and my cousin yesterday that there are a lot of things about my childhood that are, well, fuzzy. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't exactly have it right, do I? No, not at all. <laughs> One of the things was a story about my grandfather helping to build the Fontana Dam. Turns out it was the Norris Dam. Who knew? I think my dad told me wrong, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they told me it was a Fontana Dam because I don't think they knew exactly where it was. They might have known it was in yeah. Tennessee. But. And they've been to the area, but my cousin, he's really been there a bunch, and he set us straight. But one of the things that wasn't fuzzy about my childhood memories, I remember my Aunt Yulavie being able to cook like there was no tomorrow. And I remember always loving to eat at her house and when she brought food. And... You know, she is 91 years old. Yet yesterday, before we came, she got up fried chicken and made green beans and made corn and uh, what she called gravy and angel. An uh, angel biscuits. Angel biscuits. Man, they were good. <clears throat> sourdough. She gave us this loaf of sourdough bread that she just made that morning. Yeah. And, and those preserves and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> One of those childhood memories that wasn't fuzzy at all, it was better than I remembered. And I can tell you, the van's back here, and it's helped because we yesterday was a seven-hour day. It took us a long time to drive there and to drive to this spot. And the van came in really handy for lots of things, especially spending the night last night here in this state park. But I'm going to get busy eating some of this really good lemon cream pound cake. Did she give you the recipe for that? No. She didn't. She did give you the recipe for the, the biscuits. angel biscuits. Ooh. And also said something funny yesterday. We walked around um, my Aunt Yulavie's home, uh, which is a place I spent quite a bit of time when I was a, a younger person. And, you know, there are pictures everywhere. I saw a picture of my granddaddy Viles, my grandfather. And Lynn made a comment that made me go, wow, she thinks I have a big nose because when she saw my grandfather, and here I'll show you the picture I took, she said, I know what, now why you have such a big nose. Do I have a big nose? <laughs> I guess it is I'm, a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit big, but I can breathe pretty good through it, which is its main purpose. And I can smell good food. <laughs> So last night when we left my mom's, we didn't know what to expect about the boondocking spot. So we booked the spot here in this state park. But now we're gonna take the van. We've got everything packed away. We have a night reserved here tonight as well, but we're gonna go check out the national park. And if we find a boondocking spot there, well, we may just stay over there and not come back here. We'll see. But it helps to know that we have this here and it's a little bit of a comfort to know that there is a place that's safe to spend the night that's close by. So we're making a little game out of this. The next number we're looking for is number 13. And it's about the Loblolly Pines that get struck by lightning. Since they're the biggest thing here, uh, they get struck by lightning a lot. Uh, that reminds me of a story my grandfather told me about Lee Trevino. And if you know him, he was a famous or still is a famous golfer. And it was one of my grandfather's favorite golfers. And he was a character, as we would say here in the South. And... He was struck by lightning. After doing that though, he went out on another uh, day to play and then a storm came up and the uh, announcer there that was walking with him asked him why he was not going in like everyone else. And instead of going in, he started walking down the fairway, holding up a one iron. And when they asked him about that, he said, even God can't hit a one iron, but apparently God can hit loblolly pines. Yeah, you can see these trees here in this area. And Many of them have been hit by lightning and until they're dead and no leaves growing. It's kind of hard to know what they are, but I believe we're seeing number 13 there. And then off in the distance over here is number 13 as well.
that was 13 and 14 is a dwarf palmetto if you're from south carolina or if you've driven through here you know that south carolina is known as the palmetto state these are really really dwarf or small palmettos that are here by the boardwalk so numbers. so so lynn just said we started talking about these at number 10 and uh she's thinking that might be crazy but the reason we did that is we didn't download the little uh website uh page until number 10 because we kept seeing all these numbers so maybe you can be more prepared than us when you come it's probably they probably have a bro they probably have a brochure back at the um visitor center that would tell yeah. you all that you could just use a piece it's, of paper it's not this one yeah though. we got one but it wasn't the, <laughs> wasn't the right one it it is nice to kind of see what you're looking at to to, to get a perspective yeah, of what you're trying pretty, to see and it's very educational so we always like to do that kind yeah. of thing what do you think of this say compared to the grand canyon well, it's not the Grand Canyon. It's not the Grand Friggin' Canyon for sure, but... No, but it, it's still pretty in its own way. It's it not is. as spectacular as the Grand Canyon. And, you know, it is known for the worst national park. Yeah, so, so it's rating by many as the, the lowest ranked national park. But it's not grand. It's not very grand, but it, it's very this, pretty and it's definitely worth it. But we're to. grinning. We're walking yeah, around enjoying it. And I think you would too. If it was 100 degrees, you know, pretty soon I'd be going, okay, I've had enough of this. What's the shortest route back? But it's 70s, beautiful. It's in the 70s, 70s and you're in this canopy. It's a great, great, great thing to do. And if it was mosquito time, we probably oh, yeah. wouldn't like it either. Yeah. So. yeah, mosquitoes love me. But we, we think if you're driving around here, this is definitely so far, it looks like something you should do. But Ask anyone familiar with South Carolina and they're going to tell you the most famous boardwalk is in Myrtle Beach. We would argue it should be at Congaree National Park. While we were there, we also booked a guided kayak trip, and it was all something that we'll remember for a very long time. If you haven't watched that complete video, I'll put a link up above, and I'll also put it in the description and at the end of this video. We stopped to try to find a boondocking spot at Bannister Bridge Canoe Launch, but it's really just a small little parking lot, isn't it? Yeah. And there is a road back over here, but has a private property uh, sign on it so and a fence that's up so and it's know, right on the highway so yeah. i don't think we'll do this tonight yeah. we have a, a reservation tonight at the state park and it's beautiful there so i think we'll head there i think so we made it back to the campsite tonight in the uh, Suska centennial campground here in Columbia, South Carolina, and we really like it here. We build a fire, and the fire is necessary for us to cook dinner, which tonight consists of hot dogs. You may like to eat like a gourmet chef all the time, but for us, every now and then, we just want to do comfort food, and hard to beat hot dogs grilled over a fire like this, so we'll get started with that. We're already enjoying the fire. Lynn's over here looking to see if no. Bob Lefford has an echo. <laughs> Do they have one? Mm -hmm. That van back there, we love it. We got this van because we wanted this chapter of our life to be nicknamed Adventure. Off-roading adventure and enjoying things. But you know, the older we get, the more we think the next chapter is going to be nicknamed Comfort. <laughs> so, even though... This week is our one year anniversary with our van. We're already looking to see what the next thing's gonna be. Doesn't mean we're never satisfied. It just means that just like any- <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably does mean you're never satisfied. Me? Yes. Not me, I'm, I slept like a baby last night. Yeah, I didn't sleep very good. <laughs> it just means that just like every book you pick up to read, your life is the same. It's full of chapters. And, you know, if you knew this was the last chapter you were going to read, you'd probably read it a little slower. But when you know there's another chapter coming up, then you start planning for it and you start looking ahead. And that's what we do. We've always done that. You know, we've had this for a year now and we've loved it. Doesn't mean we're not going to keep it for another year or two years, but we do think that the next chapter is going to be nicknamed Comfort.
just a big guy there. Yeah. All kinds in, in this part. Tents and big class A's and travel trailers and vans. Well, like so many of our trips that we make, it ends up stopping here at this rest area on the interstate. So Maggie can go check on messages and stretch her legs. We're just about home. We're really glad that you watched this uh, behind the scenes episode of our time at the uh, Congaree National Park. We hope you'll come back and visit with us again soon. Until then, let me catch up to my pup dog because she would tell you happy tales. Looks like a happy tail to me. Happy tails are you ready? Really? Happy tails are you ready? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle.